So this is Bound to Builder 5 Dirty uh, Deep Run. We're going to uh, watch this and uh, analyze how I'm playing. This is one of my previous streams. We did final label it. I like to call here. You mostly want to just call because uh, you're going to like the small small blank and rejam uh, quite wide here. I do like the call. I guess jamming would be also fine. Dig it, I can get it get it in. He's not going to have much here. Still a bounty in play. Not like he's going to call like some 5x or 7x. Maybe like ace 5 specifically. A7. 8 7 maybe sweeted not too, not too many uh gombos there to go with so we don't have chips go all in everybody should actually get it in quite wide like nobody really has chips right the big line has two big lines but they do cover uh button small blank covers us yeah i guess it's five way all in Looking exciting, excited here. So knowing Bounty Builder, it's probably going to get deeper stack really soon. As Bounty Builder typically plays average 40, 50 B points, I would, I think. So I'm actually not sure if I should be falling here. Because small, because of the small blind. First of all, like the under the gun player probably should just uh, limp their range rather than raise. I'm not hundred percent sure about uh, playing seventeen big blinds there, but you do want to have a, a basically. Uh, or here we go. Link. Basically, what happens there is you want to have a, you want to expand your uh, playing range, right? And if you exp uh, expanding your playing range what's going to happen is the cheapest way to enter the bot is to limp right so you are most likely supposed to be doing it uh, by limping and solvers uh, often uh, agree with that whenever there is a short stack even i'm not 100 percent sure over here because small blind has four big blinds it is possible that it has pretty similar logic but because i can play bush uh push and fall the strategy as well those are like very interesting spots when nobody really have chips. Could make arguments same over here, but over here I will have a jamming range. The high check who has 17 big blinds has the biggest bounty, right? So it does make sense for me to have a jamming range. I might be wrong about this one though. I haven't really looked into that exactly. It's daily cooldown, so must be some special event. Nah, it's more turbo-ish, right? <laughs> this is a spot. Uh, oh, let's actually pause this. So this guy has 12 big blinds. He opened jams. This guy with three. This guy covers this guy. This guy doesn't have chips either. <laughs> what a crazy situation. Um... I think the problem over here is I don't need to have that much equity. I'm a little bit worried about this jam, I guess, as it it's still going to be somewhat tightish. And obviously my hand is complete trash. But if you look all these bounties, this guy can be very wide, probably, right? Like this don't really matter as much. I just want to win basically against these two and well, in that case, probably winning against these two as well. So I don't even know over here. I am not sure. Maybe this is a spot like it is five ways. So I don't really need to win that often here because of the bounties and everything to make it profitable call, I would say. But yeah, like with Sweet, it's probably a call. Yeah, like everybody has kind of wide-ish uh, range. Them would have scooped it. Would have only lost to this guy, I guess. That's the beauty of push and fold being bounties, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
So again, uh, this is a spot where the limping might be uh, more of a thing, because I want to expand my range. Probably don't want to jam actually too much. I need to call here sometimes. So the, the idea is I need to still defend the uh, MDF. So it's all about uh, whatever is the best blockers. But my range is very heavy, heavily ace high. Because on the flop, I, if I have a bear or something, I'll probably bet. On a turn, if I turn a king, I will bet. And so because of that, it's just going to be like my range is so ace high dense that I will have to make some ace high calls. Unless they don't bluff in that case, sure. But like you don't really need to win that oft, uh, all that often uh, in such spots anyway. So I don't mind open here. We are then out of 21. You do get to expand. We do cover everybody besides small. Ah, actually, we don't uh, cover the big blind. So I like to fold, actually. I thought we covering the big blind as well. Doesn't matter, but whenever the stacks are quite uh, pretty much close, it doesn't like you don't get to expand like too much in general. Also, there is definitely some ICM in play there. So we ISO pre just a mix doesn't really matter. Don't mind to bet the flop. Betting turn doesn't matter either. I think we're gonna with Queen we're gonna have a lot of uh, trashy hands here to bluff. I think Queen High will probably just straight out win decent clip. Yeah. <laughs> I look very happy about that, huh? That's how it goes sometimes. So yeah, this bounty builder is not the main one. It's cool uh, daily cooldown. So it's it's not exactly turbo, but it's turbo-ish. I think jamming is good here. I guess you can uh, argue about uh, limping and uh, non all in size. So nine out of thirteen. We defend against open. It's pretty standard. Once it goes check check, I think I get uh, I can probably go ahead and start value betting. If he had it, then he's uh, most likely betting to flop. He only four he really has is like ace four and king four suited. Maybe queen four suited. But I think I like uh, more uh, the betting than checking. Even though checking will be also the play. But it, yeah, like, it kind of depends a little bit on the uh, opponent as well. Uh, that guy is a reg, kind of played a lot with him. But if somebody is like not bluffing those uh, check lines, uh, check, check, and double check, uh, playing double check in position, you're actually supposed to be uh, starting value betting yourself, assuming they uh, still defend correctly. As my ADEX probably just wants to get value as. Mo very likely to be the best hand. Or here, this will go in. I don't think there's much to say about that. Uh, big plan has to go uh, probably any two or close to. So flipping, flipping, flipping. I actually thought this uh, is going to be a typical uh, bounty builder, which is deeper stack. This push and fold is uh, quite fun, so. That feels too tight. Basically, button doesn't matter. So we're supposed to be... Uh, because button doesn't matter, we're supposed to be... Yeah, th that is probably too tight. You still want to go for button bounty. Could argue that I want to have a limping range there, I think. But yeah, that, that fault felt a little bit too tight. Uh, this type of spots where you're like super short, uh, you don't really get to jam uh, too wide. You're actually supposed to be very tight in general with uh, playing short stacks. Because what you need is... Uh, what you're going to need is... Uh, you, you need because you don't have fold equity. Basically, you just need to straight out uh, go for value. 
You, I, I, like with five B coins, like uh, a lot of hands will qualify as value. But like, if you have like 10, 15 big blinds, it's not that simple to jam. And like, I think often people make a lot of mistakes playing to lose because you're actually supposed to be basically because there is no fold equity. You're just supposed to be playing for value. And people, and I feel like people are not doing that. They're just like very stuck on how they play GPV. But GPV, like in GPV, you're going to have some type of a fold equity, right? So playing short stack, uh, like even this one, because this is kind of unique situation because of the big uh, bounty on the big blind and big blind doesn't have chips, we cover. I think it's going to be fine. But if big blind had them big blinds or something, uh, I guess because I'm in the bottom, still going to have to jam, but like it's still supposed to be somewhat uh, tighter here. Just, just quads, huh? But you can see, like, he's calling Quinteno, right? That's the whole idea. Like, you, you you don't have fold equity, so to speak. Even though if you don't have fold equity, bears value tend to go up because you are flipping more often. And if you're flipping more often, you're going to have a spot where you have 50% equity. And if you have, one, like, six, seven big lines, like, you obviously, it's, like, going to qualify as value because you're going to have more... Uh, your bottles in general are going to be, you're not going to need that much uh, for equity uh, or uh, bot odds to make profitable plays. So this guy is just knocking everybody out, huh? Wow, a Sunrunner, huh? We have a Sunrunner in our table, or well, we had. It's very nice to run like that. I remember uh, I run like that in the 1K when I 130,000. I basically just like win every all in and it's in Gayo final label. That's basically your whole dream to win every single all in and you just open call off as loose as you want. You just win everything. I will be uh, doing similar video about that as well. So if you, this type of content is something you like, some stream highlights uh, and comments on uh, what I, how I was playing and stuff. Click that subscribe button. We did win there against the Sun Runner. Uh, I don't mind uh, just check back there. So eight seven five, it's not good flop for in position uh, player in general because out of position players blind versus blind, he's supposed to be calling around like uh, six seven eight nine ten ten hands, right? So he's going to connect with that, such a board way more often. Over there, uh, I think betting one could make a little bit more sense. I don't think it matters too much as long as I'm choosing a small size uh, with that uh, stack to bot ratio. Nine seven against stays five. <laughs> Damn. Blow knockout. Just, just getting every single bounty, huh? By the way, if you get a, if you ever uh, be in a situation where you're winning this many bounties, actually what's going to also happen is your your bot odds in basically every single scenario will be even better because like there is ICM, right? But whenever you have such a large uh, bounty sum, you going to win. You winning your own bounty matter, uh, giving you that uh, you're basically playing more towards like chips, regard to like the the ICM part. So because of that, it's just like you just uh, want to get the basically you just want to win the tournament uh, because of your own bounty as your bound winning the tournament and bounty is just going to be worth so much. So whenever you have that and on the other side, whenever your bounty is super small, you're just uh, trying to ladder rather and get the payout, uh, pay jumps. Uh, it's not going to bluff here, but like, I don't think I can really do anything else than that. Look at me. Very unhappy with that. I'm gonna say I look very unhappy with uh, that, but hey, 
the guy sun runs right so if you have a sun runner in your table there's nothing you can really do so yeah this is it for me and i will see you guys on the next one subscribe